All right. Let's see here. Check one, two. Check one, two. We got audio. Yep. We got video. Yep. We got a shadow on my shoulder. A shadow on my shoulder. Let's see if we can remove that shadow. Um, yes, we removed the shadow. Now, did we change the... We'll see if we can... Is that pointed right at my mouth? Almost. 10, 2, 3, 4. Testing. 1, 2, 3, 4. Testing. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Shadow on right shoulder. Check. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's part of my pre-show checklist. All right, where are we going to put the shadow today? Last week, we started out with a shadow here. And so I moved things around. And I have... Um, I moved my lights around again and play and continue to play with lights. It's, it's kind of fun. Today we've got a light. Yeah, you can see it right there in my glasses. It's squarish. It's, I think it's one of those low end newer lights that you can get. And that's actually the brand newer. Uh, you can get from Amazon for, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks, something like that. This one that I've got up there today has barn doors on it. Why did I want barn doors? I don't know. I just thought it would be helpful to have barn doors on there. So um, we have barn doors, and we, um, we've got that main light there, and then I've got another light, whoops, up there that's pointed at the ceiling, and then it's sort of, so it's sort of bouncing off the ceiling, and it's given me a little bit of, little bit of light here, and here, of course, the silver is always nice. And uh, hey, Rich, glad to have you. And then I've got another little kind of fill light over here that's really, really faint, really, really soft. And then I've got, <laughs> I've got my laptop here. So we probably need to shut this guy off. Um, yeah. How about that? So let's just pop that off. And that should get rid of that little light right there. Bing, it's gone. What I've been going for is to um, try to do try to do as much as I can to remove the the, the reflection off my glasses. I think I want to take that camera and drop it down a little bit more next week so that as I look into it, I'm looking into it kind of with my eyes in the middle of my glasses as opposed to eyes. Well, yeah, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Hello, Dean. Welcome. Hello, Gunner. Glad to have you. Is that Gunner? Am I, am I correct? So uh, theater, uh, theater maker IE, really funny because we just uh, did probably 90% of an install on Friday at a uh, performing arts theater in Mississippi. So that was be fun. And we've also been working with the historic Wayne Theater in Waynesboro, Virginia um, on uh, a system that that they're actually doing the installation themselves because they're in Virginia, but they were able to save some money by doing that. And we supplied all the equipment and built a PC for them. So it's been fun. Hello, Chris. Good to see you. Long time. Hope you are well. Yes, indeed. Let's see. Theater Maker says maybe increase the angle a little bit. Yeah, bring the front light just a little closer to you. I would like to do that. Unfortunately, um, at the moment, I can't. I could probably probably drop it from the ceiling and bring it closer to me. Yep. Hello, John. Welcome from Montreal. Theater Maker says, that's how I'm surviving right now, live streaming for theaters and theaters companies. Good deal. Yes, Gunner is the same alias. All right, all right, all right, all right. Chris has been busy. Finally glad to be here with you guys. Very good. Mike is here. Hello, Mike. Welcome. Welcome. Every time Mike's name comes up in a conversation, people are always saying nice things about him. There you go. 
Joe to Max. Wow. We we just it must be a, a, a slow day in Nottingham because uh, or a slow evening because Joe to Max is in the house. Welcome, Joe. Joe is the one that uh, has written that uh, that really neat app that connects all sorts of control surfaces uh, with all sorts of gear. So, for example, you can take a, a, a TriCaster control surface and using his central control software, uh, map it so that it's usable by vMix. So a great way, I'm, I'm a big one on reusing and repurposing. So it's a great way to dig out that old dusty, <laughs> that old dusty TriCaster gear and find a use for it. Yeah, Mike says, must be a different mic. I don't think so. I don't think so. Joe says, we're going to love the next update. Oh, dear. Uh, he has been throwing updates out there fast and furious lately. So, Joe, um, we need to get you on the show after the first of the year. Will you, will you come do that? Jan is here. Welcome, sir. Glad to have you. Theater maker uh, Joe says that central control is great. Well, there you go. An unsolicited, unsolicited uh, uh, pat on the back. Joe says, I'm using central control right now to control five AWS instances right now. I love cloud production. Yeah, cloud production is, um, I, it's, we're going to talk about that um, not in our next stream, but I think in the stream of that. When we do our 2021 predictions and trends show, we will, we'll be talking about cloud, cloud streaming. Yep. Good. Okay, Joe. Well, we got you on the I will shoot you an email. We'll come up with a date. Chris says he has three controllers working with Joe's software, top-notch software and support. Well, there you go. Another one, the check's in the mail. <laughs> there you go. How about that? Very good. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Okay, so we've got, um, we've got a live stream going on YouTube. Most everybody's watching that one because you can get in on the chat. Let's check over with, uh, do we have a way? Can we check on the live stream in Facebook and see how that's doing? Is that up and running? This video is live now. Okay, let's bring that up. And it looks like it's uh, paused. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's live. Okay, let's refresh that and see what happens. Oh, I see. There it goes. Got the little good button. Okay, so we're, we're doing there. We're doing well there. We've got one comment, and it's Chris. Chris is over on was over on Streaming Idiots initially. So um, let's make a, a little hi, Chris, there, so that people on uh, the Streaming Idiots group will know that uh, at least for the moment we can respond. All right, so let's get that down. And Martin is here. Hello, Martin. Good evening from the White Mountains in Switzerland. Woo! And uh, the Northern Car Car California. What is the weather in Northern California these days? In Northern California, it must be snowing. All right. And Theater Maker says, Tom, why does no one have Deck Link Quad 2s in stock? Didn't know that was the case. I don't. I don't keep that card in stock. It's, a, it's an occasional card when we're building systems, and so we don't tend to stock it. We, we, we stock an, an OEM four-port SDI card, but it's, it's pretty generic. It's just input only. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Da -da -ba -da -ba -bum. Oh, so we got three Northern California. Jim, I'm sorry I missed you when you, when you stepped in. Yeah, it's raining tonight. Okay, well, we've got dry weather here, but it's damp. I mean, it's not raining now. It rained last night, but it's, it's so it's still sort of damp outside. So I want to know from Ken and um, Rich, is it, you know, are, are you guys getting snow? Yeah, <laughs> Rich, it says Ken and, and Jim and I are social distancing. Ah, Xavier Francis says it's snowing in Pennsylvania. Hello, Miranda. I know, Miranda, I know it's snowing in Michigan, or it should if it hasn't already. 
welcome Miranda. Miranda's with PI Engineering, the X Keys folks, and they are out of uh, Michigan. I don't think it's the Mitten side. I think it's, uh, the, I think it's the other side. Jan says it's been raining or dark and gray for a week now. Ugh, that's no good. That's no good. And Tim's here. Welcome, Tim. Glad to have you. Glad you made it. We got just a few minutes left here. Oh, sorry. Miranda says they're right in the middle of the mitten. So I, I apologize. I apologize. That's right. I, I was thinking the mitten was the upper part. You're the, the mitten is the lower part. So yeah, you guys are in the lower part. That's cool. I was looking on the map the other day and, in, and the, the states were outlined, but they weren't labeled. And so I was like, okay, Michigan, Wisconsin, blah, blah, blah. What is this state up here? It's on our side but it must be Canada. <laughs> but no, that was the other part. Oh, that was funny. John says, no snow in Montreal, but freezing cold. Oh my gosh. Rich says, cloudy snow, snowing two hours up in the mountains near Lake Tahoe. Okay, there you go. Xavier says, they're supposed to get 24 inches tomorrow. That's Pennsylvania. Oh my gosh. My son and his wife and some of her family are I won't say vacationing, but, but they're in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, he said there was 10 inches of snow on the ground when he got there. It has not been above freezing the whole time he's been there. But I don't think they're due for any more snow. Holy cow. Ken says rain due in, but no snow. Jan says, uh, not that I noticed the bad weather much. Uh, that's because he has a beautiful wife. There you go. Oh, he says he spends the entire day in the cellar working on 14 day home rotation. Ooh, yeah, I would rather have some place I could go to just to be able to get out of the house. Holy cow, holy cow. Well, we do not have an update today on our i7 um, 18 core build. I've got, got installed on that for the moment, but we'll, we'll get back to that. That's the one that uh, we're building as kind of a prototype to see how it will do with eight cameras of instant replay on vMix 24, which is still in beta, but Christmas is coming. <laughs> so maybe, 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 don't know. So um, yeah, let's see, how are we doing? Two, three minutes left. All right, we're good, we're good. So good group today. Good group today, except for that Ken Benedict fella. You know, he, he, he'll just show up anywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I know the other thing that's coming up um, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it during the show is um, I am naming the, <laughs> I'm naming the live streamer of the year. It's the streaming idiots live streamer of the year. And you will never, you will never guess in a hundred years, you will not, you will not guess who it is unless I've already told you. If I've told you, and I think I've only told two people, don't say a word, please. Jan says his, uh, his 10980 is now running smoothly after some GPU driver issues. Aha. It's quite power hungry. Yeah, what have you got? A, a thousand watt, twelve hundred watt power supply on that rascal? Holy cow! I I have um, I built it just using the seven fifty that I keep on my build bench, um, but I was going to put a thousand watt on it. Yeah, Rich is asking if Nvidia has fixed that issue yet. You remember there was a post in the Streaming Idiots, not the Streaming Idiots, the YouTube. Jan's using the twelve hundred. Thank you, Jan. Um, there was a post by Martin Sinclair in the vMix forum talking about maybe if you're, if you're having some problems with your system, you might consider rolling back the NVIDIA driver um, from the current, which I think was, oh, don't quote me on that, 256 or something like that. And, um, and it was having some issues and he suggested rolling it back to the August 8th NVIDIA driver. So um, I did that, but it didn't, it didn't make any difference for me. So there you go. Xavier is using a 14 core. Ooh, he did 15 commencements over three days without a hitch. There you go. Eight hours of live streaming. 
Oh, Eric is here so we can get started. Actually, Eric, we've got 37 seconds, so <laughs> you're early. <laughs> and Clint is here. Hello, Clint. Clint is uh, enjo enjoying a bowl of, uh, of homemade vegetable soup looking out over the uh, backwoods of Kentucky. There you go. There you go. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Um, all right. So uh, uh, I think that clock on the wall, I've got something in front of that clock. You see me moving my head around. I'm trying to see what the clock says, but I've also got a clock right here. I've, I've taken out the VMIX T-Bar and I've put in its place in VMIX. You can do this in the options section in the setting. Um, I, I put it in its place, the, the clock. And so I've got a, um, it, and it gives you two choices. And so I do a countdown to the start time and we're now over by 20 seconds. Um, and I do a, uh, no, Oh no, it's, it's counting down now until the show ends. Okay, good. And then I've got a, just a regular digital clock telling me what time it is. So, um, I've got it in front of me the whole time. And that's what, that's, that's the same thing that you see when I've got the uh, streaming idiots coming right up banner out there. All right, let's see. What did I, what did I miss? Here we go. And, uh, Chris said, what are we discussing today? We're getting right to that. Eric said he just did two NCAA basketball games with VMix 24 and six cams. Oh my word, how did it work? Jan says that the, uh, the 18 core i9 10980XE can pull more than 260 watts. Whoa, not counting the rest of the system. Joe says, I don't trust anyone who doesn't use the T-Bar. <laughs> well, well. Sorry, bud. I don't use it for my own use, but I teach other people how to use it. How about that? Can I have some redemption there? Eric says that it, it worked great. That's good. That's good. Love to hear it. Six camera replay. Rich says, this is weird. My YouTube chat scrolls up with comments, but Tom's scrolls down. Let's see. Ah, you know why? No, you don't know why. Well, I'll tell you why. Because this one over here is not from YouTube. This is from, um, what do you call it? VMix Social. So I have captured my VMix Social um, URL and then flipped the color around so that it's black background because I'm trying to get as much black in front, front of me as I can so I don't have, <gasps> excuse me, so I don't have reflection. And then I also kind of overlay just, you know, parallel to it, the white version so that everybody's, pictures appear correctly. But yeah, it does scroll. Um, it scrolls from the top because the newest comment, VMix Social always wants that newest comment out there in, in front of you. So there you go. All right, Joe says, as long as you still use the one on your X keys. Oh, I put in a, a, a system at a performing arts theater on Friday. It was so much fun. They were just, they were just like this the whole time. It was three um, bird dog P200s, the bird dog keyboard, the, uh, the X keys, um, 124 T bar, and then a PC that, that we built for them. And so we were, we were playing with this and, and I had the, uh, Miranda, I had the, the keyboard set up with the, um, um, oh golly, what do you call it? What do you call it? Miranda, help me out here. I think it's called the video production key set. Um, so it's a little bit more, but it's got, it's got all the, the buttons that you see when you see that kind of, uh, controller, um, look to it, you know, with the, with the row of preview, the row of program, um, that kind and, and I, 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 I got it all set up for them just, just like in the pictures. And then of course the, the video switcher key set. Thank you, Miranda. Yes, that's right. The video switcher key set. And so, um, I had, <coughs> excuse me had it all configured just like on the diagram. But then when I did the shortcuts in vMix, of course I didn't have everything because vMix has shortcuts already pre um, configured for the, the 124 key bar, the X keys. And, and so I had to go in basically and trim out the shortcuts I didn't need. And then I left some of the, the, uh, 
the memory buttons and the PTZ control buttons. And then there's another set of, of buttons. I left those blank and, and told the folks, you know, oh, these are ones that you can configure yourselves. So, so there we go. And they were, and they loved the T-bar function. They played with that for, for minutes. Rick is here. Oh my gosh. He has got unexcused absences. Rick, I, um, I, I would very much like to have you on the show next year. If you would, uh, carve some time out of your very busy schedule. Uh, I want to talk about great, great and some other good stuff. Um, if you're not a member already, you, you may want to join Rick's Facebook group called webcasters. He, he started out, it was like, you know, him and 30 of his best friends. <laughs> now it's like 3000 of his best friends, but it's a great group, uh, especially if you're looking for the next step in, um, in video production, these guys know an awful lot. Um, there you go. Yes, Miranda, it was a lot of fun. I'm going to do, a, I, I, I'm going to go back over there. Uh, they're in Pascagoula, Mississippi and, and try to do a, um, a case study with some video and, and put it out there and have the, the, uh, T-bar of course, prominently featured. All right. So there we go. Next, next. That's right. If you want to know more about next, next, Join webcasters. You'll find out. All right, we've 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 overstayed our introduction. We are we are five minutes over, so we need to uh, we need to get this show off the, off the ground. So we're going to use our XK80. I sh I ought to have a T bar here. You know, I've got one. Anyway, all right. So we're going to do that, and we're going to go right to the show start. Oh no, did I break my T bar? Oh, look at that. I broke my X keys. It must have come unplugged. Oh, the little light's out. Oh, darn. Okay. Well, we'll just have to do this manually. Holy cow. Can we do it manually? I don't know if I can. Can I start this show, this show manually? Oh, my wow. I should be able to do that. I created the show. But where are all the goodies? Hold on. Hold on. I was playing with the uh, USB stuff earlier. There we go. This ought to do. Um, one sec. Let's make sure it's got a trigger to start recording. Triggers. Uh, restart. That's right. That. All right. Well, we'll just we'll just start start the recording the good old fashioned way. Here we go. Ah, hello, welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair. Holy cow. We had to do the, uh, the, the, the intro by hand. Well, not by hand, but manually, because I unplugged my X keys and I forgot to plug it back in. Oh no. Anyway, really excited about today's show. Got lots on the agenda. So happy that you got, I actually honored that you would carve out some time to, um, to spend with us this afternoon. We're going to talk about, um, some upcoming shows. We've got the the live streamer of the year award to 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 make, and we've also got our 2021 predictions and trends show. So those will be coming up in the future. We're not going to have a show next week because it is um, going to be right before Christmas, and I'm going to be doing decorations. <laughs> but we will have a show the week between Christmas and New Year's. I think that's when we'll do the live streaming. Uh, live streamer of the year. I want to try to get the live streamer of the year on the show. So, um, so that's, that's what we'll do. And then maybe the first week in January, we'll do the prediction show. And then um, we're going to get Joe DeMax on the show to talk some more about central control. Um, and we think we're going to get uh, Rick V on the show to talk about next, next, as we move into the new year. So it's going to be some really fun shows coming up here in the future with some of your favorite folks. Um, I want to tell you about my setup, but that's kind of part of the setup is what we're going to talk about in the show. So I'm going to push that back. Um, 
to uh, the, the last thing before we get to the, the real meat of the, of the content. So if you're <laughs> if you want to fast forward through this, it's going to be about five minutes. Um, we had postponed our um, VMix 101 class. You remember that six week um, kind of beginners novice class on VMix, uh, VMix 101. We were supposed to start it in the fall. Um, just our business exploded and we couldn't keep up with it and something had to give. So we postponed the class. The class is going to start January 26th and run through March 2nd. It's six weeks on Tuesday afternoons at three o'clock Eastern and basically covers vMix stem to stern. The idea is that with that class, if you, if you don't know vMix, when you come out of it, you're going to have a great idea of what it can do. You may not have all the keystrokes down just perfectly, but you'll, you'll have a concept. If you're an intermediate user, that is, if you're like me, you learned what you need to learn in order to be able to do what you needed to do. But there were lots of gaps, at least in my knowledge. I'd learned this and I'd learned this, but there was this giant gap in between and I didn't ever learn that stuff. So am I? Yeah, there we go. I was off center. Sorry about that. The last thing I want to be is off center. Anyway, so if you're an intermediate user, the vMix 101 class is a great way to fill in the gaps on your, on your knowledge. But the real benefit of the class well, there are two benefits. One is you get to hang out with me and ask questions. And that means all those questions that you wondered about vMix, like, you know, what, what are these little red buttons at the top that, uh, that say stream when I press the stream button? Why are they there? You know, but, but when I touch them, nothing happens. Why is that? All those crazy questions you can ask in this class. What, it'll be a two-hour session every day, so it's pretty long. But the idea is that there'll be two or maybe three blocks of lessons, uh, two or three lessons during the time, and there'll be a question and answer period after each one, and then just sort of a general free-for-all at the very end. The second big benefit of that is we do the class on Zoom, so everybody's there. We ask you to use your video and your audio, no masking needed. And the idea is that you get to know the other people in the class. You know what their interests are, you know what their backgrounds are. And the class sort of forms its own little community. And, and what we find is a lot of people that took the class together, you know, three years ago are still friends and they're still working in live streaming and they're still, you know, helping each other back and forth. And I think that's that's the, the biggest benefit of the class really is the people that you get to know in the class and uh, and what you can share back and forth. So that'll be coming up. If you're interested in it, it'll be in our website. I mean, in our, our web store at easternshorebroadcasting.com. The URL is gone, but I think if you click the, uh, the, the barcode, sorry, the QR code, then uh, it will take you to the, to, uh, the website. And this will be under classes. And if, it, if you go there right now, it's not updated. So don't go there right now, um, but we'll have it update, updated shortly. If you've purchased a PC from us, one of our live streaming PCs, you get a free seat in the class. Um, but if you need more than one free seat, go ahead and get one. So that's coming up January 26th. We're really excited about that. Um, we have, <laughs> we have been overrun. We have been overrun with bird dog P200 cameras and, and the, uh, controller keyboards. Apparently we, they, they were not shipping them and we kept sending in POs and then like, you know, 30 of them showed up all at once. So we got to pay for these rascals. So if you would like one, um, we might be able to make you a deal on one, but we can't say anything about prices publicly. So contact me if you're interested in a P200. If you'd like to test one, we do have a demo. Um, and Dean, it's actually, it, it, it's here. I'm updating the firmware and I'll probably have it on its way to you tomorrow. Um, Dean's going to test it out. And Dean has got some, um, some PTZ optics cameras already down there. I think um, a 20 and two 12s that are the NDIHX that he's going to either take as trade, that I'll take as trade or I'll help him sell. So if you're interested in um, some very carefully used, lightly used um, PTZ Optics uh, 12X and 20X in, with the NDI factory installed. Um, Dean and I can help you make a deal on that. And in fact, um, to dovetail with that, I have come into possession today of seven brand new PTZ Optics NDI 
HX 30X cameras. Um, six of them white, one of them in gray. Um, again, I can't announce pricing. Uh, I'll be putting, um, well, I, yeah, well, they're already in the web store uh, at easternshorebroadcasting.com. But if you're interested in more than one, I can make you a deal. So uh, we, we, are, we are wheeling and dealing. Yeah, we ought to do one of those crazy commercials. Um, the, uh, well, we're talking about bird dogs and, and other camera type gear. The bird dog flex, which is an encoder or decoder, depending on whether you get the in version or the out version, those are due to be uh, received here in the U.S. next week. If you have some on order with us, uh, we'll be getting ours and shipping them out. If you're interested in one, um, let me know and we'll, we'll get some. In fact, I think I've got some extras coming in anyway. So um, let me know if you're interested. It's, a, it's $3.99. It's a cool little HDMI, um, uh, HDMI input, uh, full NDI output. Um, plus, um, it, the unit is PoE and also has a power output. It's really cool. We did a video on that a while back, and I think Anthony uh, Barocas did a nice video on that even further back um, that, that tells more about those. That's the Bird Dog Flex 4K, so it'll take a 4K stream. Um, so we got that, we got that, we got that. The, um, yeah. So let's talk about our setup today. Don't have any fancy graphics like Tim does at um, at VMix. By the way, that, don't aren't we do for a VMix Fun Time live show soon? It is December sixteenth. I haven't heard anything. Maybe I've missed missed out. Maybe they're going to do another one in the, the middle of the night here in the states. Anyway, the uh, the setup that we're working with today is an um, an i seven eighty seven hundred K. So that's eighth generation i seven. PC that we have here. It is uh, not overclocked. It's it's cool by air. It's just running at stock um, stock temperatures and stock voltage, all that kind of thing. It has 16 gigs of RAM and a solid state M.2 NVMe drive as its main drive. Um, in fact, that's all it's got is that as the, the main drive. It's a 500 gig so we're probably recording to it too. Ooh, we shouldn't do that. Anyway, we'll have to look at that. Um, it is, uh, it's in a server case just right over here. Remember in the show last week, we talked about the uh, Waves, Waves Audio NS1 noise, noise filter that we use on our, our systems here to filter out some of the noise from that server. And it really works well. Plus we've got a street right over here that sometimes gets big diesel trucks using their jake brakes so you you probably will hear that despite the noise filter um the uh the audio that we're using is a, the behringer uh umc 404 hd that we again we talked about that last week and the audio technica at897 condenser mic and we talked about that last week too and I, I really like those. I've got I've got a bunch of them here in the studio. And I like the fact that you're not wired. You're not you know you, you don't have a battery pack. You don't you don't have to worry about lavs or or ear worn mics or any of that kind of stuff. It's great. Obviously, if I tap on my desk, you're going to have that effect. Um, it is a condenser mic, so my room is is intense, intentionally treated to sort of kill some of the, the the echo and reflection. Lots of different shapes of surfaces. Um, lots of blankets. Um, the the uh, faux brick wall behind me even has a big th thick blanket behind it to help absorb some of the audio, although I think a lot of it bounces off the vinyl. Um, I've got a couple of AOC, um, what are those, 32-inch, uh, 27-inch? No, I can't tell. I don't have the box around. Anyway, a couple of really nice curved monitors that I got on sale. So I've got kind of a wraparound effect. So I've got my vMix here. And then I've got anything else that I want to see. Right now, I happen to be monitoring the YouTube comments over here. So, um, oh, <laughs> Roderick Henry is saying, why don't you provide a little subject matter to your YouTube live streams? <laughs> that would be good, Roderick. That would assume that I had some planning in advance and <laughs> would know what that was. But I will go back and do it after the fact. Um, the other part of the setup here, of course, is the, the when I have it plugged in, my X keys uh, XK80, um, and then a wireless keyboard, wireless mouse, 
and from Logitech and oh yes and the camera and that is what what I really want to focus on today because I didn't like this camera when I started using it and the longer I use it and the more the more familiar I get with it the more I like it now I'm not going to take it home and tuck it in with me at night I don't like it that much but I'm thinking that this is going to make a good little studio camera this is the bird dog p100 it's 1080p 1080p 60. it will it is full ndi and in fact it has a i'll show you the web interface in just a minute but it actually has a little bar on the web interface a little little um, slider where you can adjust the amount of bandwidth that it takes up so if you're kind of bandwidth challenged on your network because remember ndi is all network based um, then you've got the ability to reduce and yes it's going to reduce the quality when it does that but you know you got to make some some compromises um, it is sitting right in front of me right now in fact i think i've got a picture of it let's cue that up and make that go live there we go it is uh, you can just see it's just sitting there um, let's go to um, Let's go to the camera tab here and you can watch it. Shall we, shall we watch it move? Let's watch it move. So we're going to go and we're going to zoom into another part of the studio. In fact, I'll show you what that zoom looks like. Uh, the studio is a wreck right now. You can see we're, we're building PCs faster <laughs> than, we can, than we can think. Um, and uh, you notice who's, who's tucked away over there in the corner. Um, that is the zoom. So it's a, it's a 10 X zoom on this little rascal. Um, I really do like the, the functions of it. Um, let's see what happens if we do here, if we go back to the, the other shot, let's see, let's come back. Um, Let's come back to me. I don't want to show you that zoom because it's pretty. Um, let's go. Let's go back to this shot for just a second. And I want to try something that I thought was working, but let's see. Um, if yeah, it's, I'll, I'll have to show this to you a different way in just a second. Um, so the um, the the P100 um, cool little camera, I think, and you're looking at it with a Logitech C920. So that was just per, per, kind of perched up there. The, um, the, the P100 has an indicator light. Well, let's go back to the camera. It has an indicator light, a little blue light over here on the left um, that indicates that it's on, and then an activity light over here on the right. But at this point, uh, neither of those are tally lights per se. Um, it, it does in the web interface appear to have an, an, a way to enable the tally, but uh, I don't think they have done that yet in the uh, in the web inter, in in the firmware. The uh, back of the camera. Let's let's go over to this. The back of the camera looks like this pretty simple but you can see it's hdmi output it's sdi output and it's ndi output it can be uh, powered poe in that rj45 jack on the left or powered uh, dc you can see the the round port there on the far left um, it has the um, the the usb3 port that's the the blue one on the left for it says for audio i haven't used it for audio yet that's going to be interesting but i have been using it to to do the up, updates the um, hey ron glad to see you in fact i was thinking about you yesterday i want to chat with you sometime um was doing a, an update and apparently there are two different parts to the camera that you have to update you have to update what's called the baseboard and the baseboard is the part that's actually not built by bird dog it's the it's built by i think Bolin, the camera company and then you update the firmware, which is the, the bird dog part, the, the, uh, the bird dog part on the inside, the big uh, NDI chip and whatever else they've done. I'm not real clear on, on who's, who's built what, but um, 
At first, I didn't like the camera because I didn't think the picture was clear. I didn't think the color was good. And I didn't think the ability to control it was good. <laughs> so there was a lot not to like. Uh, what I did like about it is that it was full NDI and then it was adjustable NDI and then it was PoE. So I could just pop it in there, plug in one cable and away we would go. And, uh, and vMix sees it as NDI. And then for, for control, if you have vMix 4K or vMix Pro, you can control a PTZ camera like this. Uh, and it uses the bird dog Visca control through vMix. Now, if you're using the, uh, the keyboard, oh golly, I should have brought one with me. Anyway, if you're using the keyboard, oh, well, here's a picture of it. Now, that's the picture. In fact, that's the picture of the keyboard with three, three P100s. Apparently, there's some sort of special. If you buy three 100s, you get a reduced rate. I think it's $500 off the, the keyboard. Uh, if you buy three P200s, you get a free keyboard. Anyway, um, the, uh, the keyboard uses NDI protocols to control the camera. So it's, so it's slightly different. Um, the, uh, let's see, I think I've got a nice close up shot of the camera here. Yep. It's, it's a, um, a 10 X zoom. So it's not a big zoom at all. I, I would, I would probably not be using this camera in, um, in a church environment, say for example, unless it was just a really, really teeny church, you know, like less than 20 members. Um, or maybe it was in a, a, a church Bible study or something like that, that would, um, that would need not a big zoom, something that would be, you know, kind of conference room size. And I guess this would be a good conference room camera too. But what I'm becoming invent, convinced is that this is a good little studio camera that the, uh, the 10X zoom is all the zoom you needed. You remember, let's go back to it. Um, uh, where are, are my, did I, oh, I put it on the camera tab. There we go. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to actually sh show you, this is the, this is the zoom. It's pretty fast. Not the zoom, sorry. That's the pan tilt. And this is the zoom. And so it's zooming I guess that is, uh, that's 10 X from across the room, which is probably 18 to 20 feet. So that's 18 to 20 feet. And then we can go back to the other shot. And that's the, uh, the fully zoomed out 18 to 20 feet. And then hang on as it whips back around to me. There we go. One of, the, one of the objections I had to this camera originally was that the, um, the camera didn't appear very crisp. And I realized part of that was that, um, that it was, I think it was focusing on my background. And my background is about, uh, it's about 18 inches behind me. But when you're in tight like this and the camera is um, probably that's going to be what, four feet. So the camera is probably about five feet from me right now. And so, you know, five and a half feet or excuse me, six and a half feet behind me, it was focusing and it looked really, really clear. And then I could tell, you know, oh golly, I need to shave, trim this up a little bit. Sorry about that folks. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't see the individual little whiskers and I wanted to, see, I mean, not that I wanted to see the whiskers, but I wanted to see the whiskers as an example of what the camera would do. And so I got into the vMix controls and I was able to adjust the focus a little bit. In fact, not only would I, was I able to adjust the focus in vMix, I was able to adjust the, I mean, there, uh, let's, let's show you, sorry about this. Let's, let's show, not tell. So let's add a quick, what do we add? A desktop capture. I think it's display two. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's not the one we wanted. That's display one. Try again. I want vMix to have little bitty icons for these captures that show, there we go. All right, so that's my desk. Actually, that's the whole monitor. Um, so I am going to go into the camera settings here. 
we'll pull this up and I'm just going to drag this up so that you're not so distracted by infinity. And this is the camera. This is the bird dog camera. Uh, you can see the IP address. Um, I'm connected to it. I could disconnect, but I'm connected to it right now. And so I have the ability to, uh, to, to move it with these cursor controls. I have the ability to zoom and focus, and I can adjust the increments in which I focus. So if I, if I, push it all the way up here and click the focus button one time, it's going to move the lens quite a ways. But what I found out is I can get that really fine focus if I bring it all the way down here and then one click or two clicks. And you know in vMix, and in fact, let's, let's close this out for just a second. If you click, I don't know if you can see right down here where my mouse is. Um, but this little teeny window that says display a large preview of this input. Click the preview to, to close. If I, if I pop that up, um, I'm assuming that you see that. Yeah, there we go. Now I can, uh, I can make the adjustments, um, especially if I put, put this on a different monitor. The other thing I can do is I can make it full screen. And so it just appeared full screen on the monitor just to just to the left. And it gives me a chance to, to see which one of these little whiskers I want to zoom in on. Um, so so that, was, that was really cool. The, um, the other thing is that there is a, a web interface for this. And let me, let me get that prepped right here. And we'll go to that. And so here's the web interface for the bird dog. Um, we're looking at the dashboard here, and I am going to go to um, I'm going to go to the AV page, and we've got several different things here we can do on the AV page, and I think I want picture, and then I used sharpness, and let's take a second and just actually sharpen this in vMix so that you can see the text a little bit better. And so I found out that a combination of the focus control through, through vMix, which was actually adjusting the, the focus on the camera, and then the sharpness control really gave me the crisp image that I was looking for. Um, and so that, that made me feel so much better about that. But I, I didn't like the color. Um, and so I was able to get in and find out, um, well, let's see. Um, I've got the white balance set on auto. I've got the, uh, the picture, excuse me, the exposure set on auto. So I haven't done anything. I, I'm not doing anything manually. Um, and I've gone into something called the color mat matrix. And it's allowed me to pick particular colors that I want to boost. Now, right now, I've got everything kind of set the way I like it, which is pretty much much mid. But the other day when I was doing this, I was having trouble getting my blue shirt, which really, this is a good, what you see is a good accurate color for what it is. And, and the, the skin coloration is good and accurate. Um, I am getting a little pasty. And then the, the brick wall is a good accurate representation of what there is there. And so once I was, I got, got the colors straight, and I think there've been a couple of firmware updates since I, since I started this process. So maybe those have, have, have kind of helped to fix it a little bit more. Um, but once I got the color right, boy, it, it made all the difference. So I have, I have good clear focus um, and I've got, got good color. The, um, what was the other thing? There was something that was not working um, and Bird Dog put out a firmware update and, and made it work. The, um, the, I think the update that I'm working with now is actually a beta. So it's, um, it's, it's not been released, but I think it's supposed to be released like, um, like maybe Monday. Um, the camera is, is $1,595. So you say, oh, $1,595, you know, $1,600. Well, $1,600, but it's full NDI. It's 1080p. It's 60 frames a second. And it is, it is Boku flexible. Um, and I am, I am going to put this camera into my small studio builds in the future. In fact, there was one uh, build that, uh, that I was actually going to do 
three weeks ago over in New Orleans. Uh, I had to postpone because of COVID. And we'll, we'll hopefully we'll be doing that one in January. And I'm thinking very seriously about taking out the three Bird Dog P200s that we put in there and putting three P100s in and, and helping save them some money. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see. At, at some point, maybe I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. But I'm, I'm really happy with the clarity of this, of this picture, with the color in the picture. Now, the lighting, I'm still working on my lighting a little bit because, again, I, I want to get my glasses so that they are, uh, yeah, I need, to, I need to lower that camera just a little bit so I can lower the focal point. Uh, so, well, not my focal point, but the camera's focal point. So, um, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, if you, if you would like to demo this camera, um, let me know. I've got a demo available that I can send to you. It won't cost you anything to receive the demo <laughs> and you'll either have to buy it or you'll have to pay to ship it back because I'll pay to ship it to you, but you're, you're shipping it back to me. Um, but you know, slow boat to China shipping is fine. The, um, so we've got a demo available of the P200 and the P100. And if, um, I guess, I guess we could set up a demo on the keyboard. Um, the trickiest part, and, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get into this. The trickiest part is, is sometimes getting the camera on the network. Um, the cameras come pre-configured to uh, do, um, uh, I think, what is it? Let's see. Let's just double check before I speak out of turn. Um, yeah, they, they come pre-configured DHCP, which means that your, your router or whatever you're working with, your switch will set the, uh, set the address for the camera. And then there's a little utility called Bonjour Browser. <laughs> That's terrible. Sorry about that. That, um, that will identify uh, it basically looks on your on your network to see what's there. And then when it finds your bird dog camera, if you click on it, it'll tell you the IP address that's been assigned to your camera. So then you can go into the web interface. Let's see. Let's go back to this web interface for just a second. And you can see right up here at the top, um, that's where we put in the, the IP address. And then we just log in and go from there. Um, the other, the other um, menus that are here, in addition to the dashboard, which tells us the name, the network configuration method, the IP address, the mask, um, the current video format, which is uh, 1080p 59.94, status is active, serial number, and then the firmware version. Um, the, the next tab or menu allows us to go to the network where we can choose a static uh, IP address if we want to and set some other uh, parameters. Uh, there's also the PTZ system, which allows us to go into control, um, to go into settings. And in this case, it's, it's just a PT max speed. And then the on-screen display, so we can turn the on-screen display uh, on or off. So if I go back to this menu, you can see now I have a, a display that's over that. Um, and then I can, go th I can go through those to see the same kinds of things that I'm seeing on this, this menu. Uh, system is where I can I can reset my password, or this is where I update my firmware, um, or can ch make some changes to my NDI network settings. And then the A slash V is really the the meat of it. This is where you can go in and, and change all the color, um, and and other things like for example the uh, the NDI uh, output bandwidth I've got set right now for 120 megabits per second. Um, that may be a little low. And I've been testing it to see how that, how it affects the image. Um, and then here on the exposure, I've got the ability to set it for manual shutter priority, uh, iris priority, or bright, and then make the appropriate changes. With the white balance, um, again, I've got the ability to go manual um, or indoor, outdoor, one push. Um, and then with picture, I've got uh, the sharpness control, uh, the noise reduction, which I found out pretty much you, you've, you've got to pump that one up to five to get a good noise-free um, picture. And then saturation, hue, contrast, and gamma um, available down at the bottom. And then the color matrix. And the color matrix is really cool. And I, what I found is that sometimes a color will not, like, for example, like, like my shirt, 
um, in an earlier version of this of the firmware, um, I would go into the the color matrix and I would take the blue gain right here and I would I would I would max it out and then take the blue hue and use it to adjust the the, the color for my camera. I mean for my shirt and that that worked really really well. Um, but I found out since then that they you know maybe there was some settings in the coloration that, that weren't correct and now my, my shirt does really really well kind of all by itself um, but when i was at the theater last week installing uh the three um the p200s uh which have the same kind of color matrix and we were talking about you know if somebody if, if a singer is on stage with a red dress and the red dress isn't the right color that you can use the the, the color matrix to pop up that one particular color without affecting all the other colors. Um, so you know how sometimes when you're trying to do a, a white balance and, and you're, 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 you're changing the reds and the greens and the blues uh, and it doesn't always have the effect because it changes that for everything. In this case, it's just picking the one color and, uh, and going with that. So I'm, I'm really, uh, really, really becoming attached to this P100 uh, list price 1595 full NDI 1080p camera. Um, I think it's going to be it. I, I I have not been a fan of it up until now, but I am a fan of it now, and I think we'll we'll start using it in um, in small studio builds. Um, I've got uh, a couple of friends that have larger studios that I I want to see if they'll uh, they'll give this one a try and see. I've I've also got a, a client who has a, um, a barn, essentially a, a large carriage house that has, um, I think he's got five of these in there. Um, he bought five of these from me and the keyboard and a PC, of course, and a P200. And we were struggling to get the P200 and the P100 to match up and then found out that simply there was something wrong with this P200. So I sent him a new one. He's going to send me back the old one and I'll tinker with it. And then, uh, um, do an RMA in it if, if I can't find it, it was just a setting. But they, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident now with the changes to the P100 and uh, with him having a new P200 that he can get his color spot on. He wants to do a, a I don't know if you've ever seen the Daryl's House videos um, from Daryl Hall, formerly of Hall and & Oates. And uh, he would invite lots of musicians into his, his house where he had a number of cameras and he would live stream and record the events. And, uh, and so my, my client and I have been working on the same thing for, for his venue. So it, it's really, really pretty cool. Well, I have overrun my time here. I apologize for that. We're going to go to the post show in just a second. Um, but if you have any questions about the, um, the P100 or the P200 or any of the bird dog line, um, I'm happy to answer them. We're, we're getting more and more familiar with them and liking them more and more. Not to say that we don't like the, the PTZ Optics cameras and, and the various accessories from PTZ Optics, but they're two different categories. Um, and so I think each one kind of has its, uh, its, what would you call it? its um, Its purposes, its uses, its, its position. Yeah, pos its position in the market. So there we go. Um, that is the show for today. We're going to go to post show in just a second, stick around and we're going to see if we can't get the, <laughs> get the closing to work the way it's supposed to. Fingers crossed. Here we go. No, that's the opening. Okay. We're going to be right back with the closing. Here's the closing. We'll try again. There we go. There we go. Now we're in post show. Thank you, Jim. Jim says, Hey, good show. All right. Checks in the mail, Jim. Um, let's see. Let's go back. All right. Eric wants to know where Maggie is. I hope Maggie's completely mended up. 
Maggie and I were, were, were COVID twins for a while. Uh, Dean sa says, we're, we're thinking of placing two PTZ cameras, one stage right, the other stage left, basically for band cameras and maybe some congregation. Uh, a P100 might work in that instance. It might. It might. And Dean, if you want to, I, I know you, you'd ask for a P200 to try out. I don't think we can send you both of them at the same time, um, but I'd be happy to send you a P100 once we get the P200 back. Uh, hide it in the flowers, says Ed. I like that. Every church should have flowers and they can hide their cameras in the flowers. All right. All right. And uh, right back at you, Bruce. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Indeed. Um, let's see. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Mike says uh, that I was a little too far right, so I need to move a little bit to my left. There we go. Okay. So, so now we're right. Right back in the center. <laughs> right back in the center. Center. Um, Allegheny Media, who I think must be um, Ryan, he says he has some memory issues from time to time from COVID uh, that I could use that excuse. I don't want to use any excuses. I just want to be back to 100%. Uh, and I feel like I am. Thank you. For, for those of you that don't know, during November, um, Sandy and I were exposed to the COVID virus and, um, and tested positive to it. After that, we think we were exposed uh, in a, a restaurant in Tampa. Uh, where we had gone with uh, two of my sons and their spouses. And, and in fact, all six of us ended up testing positive. Sandy and I had the, the worst of it. For us, it was kind of like a bad flu. For the, the young'uns, you know, they just had a head cold and they kept moving. So it wasn't a big deal. Um, so there. So there. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. All right. So Ryan says, I need a T-bar. Well, actually, Ryan, I have one. Um, I, haven't, I haven't configured it yet. It's, it's in a box with its uh, video switcher set, that extra set of keys that are all labeled so nicely for, for video switching. And I need to build it out because I wanted to, I've got some clients here locally that are interested in taking a look at it. So um, I know the, the guys at, at, uh, at, at vMix use the T-bar for their, for their VMix Fun Time live show, but I, I really can't imagine how the T bar is going to make a difference for me because I don't do I, I don't do a lot of you know kind of merge effects. Um, most everything is a cut, or if it's a merge, it's intended as a merge so that, uh, for example, let's see, if it would be um, you know this, I would merge like that. That would be the merge that I would take, but. Um, I'm not sure what use I would have, what I would do with a T-bar. What would I do with a T-bar? Um, so there we go. So, uh, so Jonah has the, the best comment of the day. It's like, you're just old, dude. <laughs> the grandpa, well, don't, they don't call me grandpa. They call me pop. Because I figured, you know, that's a fun word to say. You know, just you could just walk around saying it. Pop. And what kid doesn't like to say pop? And so when, when I see them and they see me for the first time in a while, it's pop. And there's that great Dr. Seuss book, Hop on Pop. I mean, it just, it was, it was just all meant to be. It was just meant to be. So Minecraft Expedition asks, uh, is, is Sinclair the Sinclair from the Sinclair Broadcasting Group? Um, actually, no. I mean, you know, we're probably kin because all the Sinclairs are kin, but no. Um, but this is the Sinclair from the Sinclair Sports Network. At one point, we, we had the Sinclair Sports Network. <laughs> and we, I thought, you know, I thought we were going to get a cease and desist from Sinclair Broadcasting Group, but apparently we, did, we didn't get that, that high up on the radar. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so Gunner says that uh, he's got a new tool set, um, a virtual set. Um, so we'll have that available, or he will have that available next week. Um, if you want to send it to me, we'll, we'll play with it on the show. That, that might be kind of fun. Um, 
let's see what else wait a minute did we miss some comments back from from way back when um -bum. yeah if you if you happen to miss it eric said earlier uh in the pre-show that they had done two NCAA basketball games using the vMix Beta 24. And you're not supposed to use the 24 for production, even though he did, and we are right now. Um, you shouldn't. Uh, but if you'd like to, <laughs> you can go to the vMix Forum, and that's forums. Oh, oh sorry, it goes this way. Forums, plural, dot vMix dot com forums.vmix.com and go to the general discussion and in there will be a whole thread on the vmix 24 what they call the preview they call it a preview some places they call it a beta some places but in every place they say don't use it for production but you can download it and try it if you've never used vmix before you can download it and use it as your 60-day trial um, if you already have vmix you can download it and install it it, the, the, big, the big feature in vMix 24 is expanding replay from four cameras to eight cameras. So you have to have vMix Pro in order to be able to see four cameras to begin with. Um, so if, you, if you'd like to play with this feature, uh, either find a computer that's never had vMix on it, and you can download the trial and try it there. And that will give you vMix uh, 24.0.0.37 um, as a trial edition, which is equivalent to the Pro, which would be previously the four camera edition, now is the eight instant replay camera edition. Um, we are building a, uh, uh, currently it's, it's kind of a prototype 18 core CPU, um, you know, 2080 Ti graphics card, um, chock full of RAM, real fast RAM. Um, a prototype to test this machine on and see if we can get eight cameras of instant replay going at the same time. Um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And we are uh, we are getting there with it. So let's see. Um, Memories Forever says that I use T-Bars in live shows where the where the is when you have a singer doing a nice ballad and use two cameras from two different angles and do a, a nice mix. Yes, yes, I agree. And uh, or if you've got you know a singer and you've got a, a a beautiful chandelier, you can have the chandelier on one camera and the singer on the other, and then blend the two together using the T-bar for sh for sure. Um, and uh, we're, we're getting a plug on the Sinclair name to say that. Uh, that I am Martin Sinclair's cousin. Now that 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 has not been verified. We have not been able to verify that by any of our our past history um, or or any kind of search back through the family records. But um, we're guessing that we're probably cousins. You know, every, there are not that many Sinclairs in the world. Um, here is a great comment. Martin asks, why are we streaming in 60p? Martin, this is part of an experiment, and I should have mentioned it during the setup earlier, and thank you for bringing it up again. Um, part of the reason is because I want to see how this i7-8700 uh, works uh, with 1080p 60. Uh, I want to see how the camera works with 1080p 60. And, and and obviously the um, and I think the bit rate. What is the bit rate going today on the stream? We're going at 4.5, which is not real fast. Uh, 4.5 megabits on YouTube and also on Facebook. We're sending both of them the same thing. I don't think Facebook is displaying 60p, but um, but I know YouTube is. But the reason to do it is is it, number one to test all this, but number two. I think it gives just a little bit more of a real motion to the video. Uh, the 60 frames a second, even though your eye probably can't see 60 frames, um, you know, something like me moving my fingers like this at 30 frames a second would be more of a blur than it is at 60 frames a second. Now, now when I'm doing it fast, it's, it's obviously it's a little bit of a blur. 
but but the difference between 30 frames a second doing this and 60 frames a second is is pretty substantial. So if I were doing um, any type of sports, any type of sports, except maybe chess, <laughs> if that's a sport, I would be doing it 60 frames a second. In fact, I would back up to 720p if I didn't have the bandwidth and, and keep the frame rate at 60 frames a second. Now for, um, um, oh golly, my brain just went to mush. Um, there is a sport in Switzerland that involves ice and involves a giant granite stone. <laughs> and I can't remember the name of the, the sport. Um, but it'll, it, somebody's going to mention it here in the chat in just a second. Um, but I would, I would do that at 60 frames a second. Now, the, the PTZ cameras that you have uh, that you got from me will do 60 frames a second. Curling. Thank you, Michael Graves. Yes, curling. Ugh. I wanted to call it icing, but I knew that was a penalty in hockey and that wasn't right. Um, if you wanted to do 60 frames a second, you're going to have to physically get to those cameras and change the dial on the back um, to 1080p 60. But you may want to try it with one that's easier to get to and see if it if it increases the the um, the re the realism of the event. Um, you know, maybe when when you're using the whatever they call the little brooms. Uh, you know, maybe since that's a, a, a motion, a lot of motion in an otherwise still picture, that, um, that that would kind of, you know, make that just a little bit more clear and make that um, more enjoyable for the folks, folks washing at home. Thank you, Clint. And Martin says, yes, it, it, is, it is curling. Um, and Eric says, this is interesting. Um, Eric, I thought I sent that one. Uh, oh yeah, he's he's running an i9 9900 uh, X at 60 for his cams, but his output is 5994 for TV. Um, that's interesting. I'm running 5994 for everything. My tendency, yeah, and and you have to run 5994 for TV. Yeah, well, I guess. If your cameras will only do 60, you know, choice of 30, you know, 24, 30 or 60, then that's what you have to do. It does require a little extra horsepower in vMix to make that, make that change. Um, and, you know, and I, I agree with, with Michael Graves and need to get Michael Graves back on the show if just to let him share some of his knowledge because he's, he's brilliant. Um, 60p is more fluid. It, it, is, it is a more fluid because you've got more, more video. You've got twice as much video. Um, I, I, I think so. Um, let's see. This is John talking about his... Uh, his 18 core CPU, he's only been able to touch 40%. Oh, that's great. That's great. And poor Michael Graves, he's just, he's, he's so modest. <laughs> uh, okay, and, and Eric explains uh, that he has Hollyland Wireless, and that's why the 60P and not the 5994. Um, and indeed, yes, cinema is 24. And you know, it's funny when I was first starting out with uh, with live streaming, and I was in a bandwidth restricted location. That is, I had an AT and T old fashioned DSL connection that I think was about 0.5 up. Um, and so we were, and we probably used almost all of that with with video and audio. But in trying to save um, trying to save bandwidth. And and keep um, the bit rate high. Uh, we we experimented with with 24 frames a second. Um, didn't like it. Ended up going back to 30. But um, and I think we were we were streaming 480p. Uh, but it was it was fun. Those were those were the good old days. Those were the good old days. That was back in 2000, 
2008, 2009, or maybe it was 2009 when we uh, we were able to, uh, one of the boys on, the, this was soccer, football for those of you across the pond, and one of the boys on the team had some grandparents who lived near the venue. It was a football stadium that was lined out for soccer, beautiful field, nice and wide, full width, even though it was an American football stadium. And um, the the grandparents lived across the ravine in a neighborhood. And so we, we paid for it, but we convinced them to let us put in um, the, uh, the TV cable version of internet at their house. Um, and we ran it to their tool shed. <laughs> and then off of their tool shed, we ran 50 foot of, uh, of ethernet, PoE, to uh, a pair of, of, of I, I don't remember what brand they were, Ubiquity radios or something like that, um, and, and hung one on a tree and then across the ravine hung one on a press box and we were getting like 50 megs or something like that. It was wonderful. We had to go reset it before every game because it, it, it never reset itself. And the, the tool shed is where the grandparents had their washer and dryer. And so the, they kept unplugging our, our, uh, our radio <laughs> so they could use the washer and dryer. And we had a, a power cord there for it. Anyway, it was fun. It was, those were the good old days. Good old days. Um, Living Waters, you are, you are very welcome. To, to turn in any time, no guarantee you will learn um, much more than you have here. Um, memory says 60p is more fluid and better for slow motion replays. Well, think about that. Yeah, if you're, if you're running a slow motion replay at 50%, that's 30 frames a second. So that's, that's, that's pretty nice. The, uh, the new VMix 24, apparently, if you can get the camera, it will run at uh, 240 f frames per second. So that means if you slowed it down to 25%, you would still be at 60 frames a second for your slow motion instant replay. Look out, Bubba, look out, holy cow. And Xavier is helping us out with the math there that 29.97 that and 59.94 were broadcast standards. We're not sure where that 0.03 and that 0.06 fell off, um, but 30 and, and 20 came to use, use for computer monitors and, and, and actually for television sets too. You notice television sets are always, a, the, the megahertz are always in increments of 30 or 60. Um, and that's because the, um, the alternating current I think is either 30 or 60 cycles or 30,000 cycles or something like that. So that's why you've got the 30 or 60 and we're at, in, um, in Europe and other ports of the country, you're uh, with a different alternating current uh, that runs at either 25,000 or 50,000 or, or whatever it is. And that's why they have 25 frames per second, 50 frames per second, because of the, otherwise you would get flickering in your monitors. Um, yes. Thank you, Michael. That's right. It's, it, it is the NTSC and the PAL standards. That's right. And Xavier says it's 60 hertz. Thank you very much. But Oz says that uh, 2997, 5994 never used down under. Huh. Are you guys using uh, 25 and 50? Michael says used to be 30 but they needed space to put the color burst. Oh dear, now you've opened a can of worms. What's a color burst? And Martin is, uh, in his opinion, for fast sports with near camera views, 60 frames a second makes sense. For a show, it's overkill and use much energy for, for coding on all sides. Um, I would agree. I would agree, it's definitely overkill. But I like it. <laughs> I mean, if you're doing, for example, if you're doing a show, uh, either as a producer, where that is you have a client, or you're yourself producing, um, and you want to look as good as you can, sixty is the is the deal. And if somebody's watching on their phone, in fact, you know, let me dial this up on the on the phone here. I'm on Wi on uh, Wi-Fi. 
But let me dial this up and see what I can find out about. Um, do I have the Wi Fi on? Yes, I have the Wi Fi on. Streaming Idiots live. Here we go. And we're going to go max screen. So there it is. Unfortunately, look, they, they put all the comments go over my face. That's no good. Um, but it's it's doing an auto quality of 240p so it's taken it back at least on the the resolution and it's given me a choice it, can you see those choices you probably can it's just like all white to you yeah but it's it's i've got a choice of 144 240 360 480 720p 60 and 1080p 60 and it is auto selected 240p probably because that's really all the the real estate it needs on the screen. But if I select 7, 7, 20, 60, and then if I can get all these, yeah, all these little comments to, to appear and see if I can get some, oh yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Oh, that looks good. Can you see how good that looks? No, <laughs> you can't see it, how good it looks here, but it looks really good. Holy cow. Yeah. But if I was not on Wi-Fi and I was eating up my, you know, cellular data plan, I wouldn't, <laughs> I would not appreciate somebody that was sending me 720, 60, especially if that's all I could use. Um, so Oz says uh, 20 and 50, and they never had fractional frame rates. And Michael is amused by gamers who want their webcam to be 60 frames a second when there's no action to make use of it. <laughs> yeah, well, they, but they, it's all about speed, whether you use it or not. And even if it's just a little talking head, they want their lips to look good at 60 frames a second. <laughs> I won't even comment on this one. Gee whiz. I mean, you know, golly. I thought we were friends, Martin. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. It's okay. Good discussion. Good discussion. Yeah, we probably ought to go back through the the old frame rate and um, and broadcast rate and NTSC and PAL again. We haven't done that in a while, and a lot of folks are joining us now. Um, so here we go. Francis knows a thing or two, so much so that it goes off the end of the page. Francis, you got to make your comments just a little bit shorter. Here's the rest of his comment. Well, streaming at 60p doesn't matter. 60p doesn't matter because I think it's your bit rate that matters because your bit rate determines how much data you're sending, right? We'll have to have that discussion too. <laughs> Xavier, you're fine. I'm just poking fun at you. Everybody gets fun poked at them sooner or later here. Yep, we do. Well, guys, I got to wrap this up because I got to go back and um, and finish up a PC and get it ready to ship and get Dean's ready, get Dean's camera ready to, to ship. So, um, oh golly, well, we've got a couple of comments. Excuse me, we've got a include here. We'll let Michael Graves have the last word that H265 at 60 can be the same as H264 at 30. Oh my gosh. Now we've opened up a can of worms. And Jan says that he'd rather send 720p at 50, 20, 720p 50 at 4 than, 8, than 1080 50 at 4. I give that a thumbs up. I agree with that. But I'd rather send 1080p 
60 at 12 <laughs> than I would 7, 20, 50 at 4. So there we go. There we go. Well, Xavier, we're glad to have you. You're welcome anytime. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, or better yet, join us on our in our Facebook group called Streaming Idiots. And um, we have a lot of fun there, too. There's always a great discussion going on, something about streaming pretty much 24-7. Um, and let's see. Last comment, Martin gets. I think the picture quality with 30p compared to 60p at the same frame rate will be better at 30p. Picture quality. Well, picture quality. What is picture quality? Is picture quality clarity? Is picture quality smooth motion? Um, I, I wonder if I can do t stream two YouTubes at the same time. That would be fun to try as a test to have two streams, one at 60 and one at 30 and see which and, and at the same bit rate and see which one looks best. Now, obviously, there's an optimum bit rate for 60 and an optimum bit rate for 30. Um, so if you were streaming third 1080p 30 at 2.5, uh, you couldn't stream 1080p 60 at 2.5 and expect for that to be a good comparison. But if you did two at 1080p 60 at, well, what are we doing at it today? Did I say 4.5? Yeah, we're doing uh, H264 1080p uh, 60 at 4.5. Um, and that also looks really good at, at 3, at 30 frames a second. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll have that discussion. We'll have that discussion. So, Jan has the, the final word. Good to see that we're still alive and kicking. Anyway, we will catch you guys next week. So, so appreciative. Uh, we won't catch you next week. We will be off next week, but uh, we'll be back in two weeks. And... Uh, we're so appreciative to you for being here, and we will see you later. If I had a T-bar, I'd do this.